So would you please tell us your name and when you attended Susquehanna? I'm Dr. Richard Derrick. I attended Susquehanna in 1957 and 1961. Graduating in 1961. And what have you brought to our harvest today? I brought um, my varsity football jacket. I brought uh, another uh, jacket which I believe belonged to a cheerleader at one time. And I brought a, a golf visor that says Crusaders on it. <laughs> yeah, now that we're the Seahawks, we, we're the I, think I, I don't know if I could wear that anymore. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All of my memorabilia also says Crusaders, too, because I'm a senior, so. All right, so everything that you've brought today is from your years here at Susquehanna? Uh, well, the, the visor they sent to me is a gift for, some, you know, for something uh, uh, that, was, that was later, I, I, I believe. All right, and so how did you acquire these items? But you told us about the visor. How did you acquire the jackets? I can't. Re well, the f play, I, I played varsity football for four years. Won four letters, for four years, and so the jacket was given to me when after I won the first letter. Oh. I believe the. Um, I don't know how I acquired. I don't know how I acquired that other uh, smaller Susquehanna jacket. Um, so. And why did you decide to bring this well, um, I uh, I have a granddaughter, Morgan Derrick, who's a freshman, and uh, I asked her parents before I came up if the jacket would fit her, and they said no, it was too small for her. And I thought it was hanging up in the closet with my varsity jacket, and I said, well, um, maybe I'll donate. Should, maybe I should donate it. And then the visor, because it said Crusaders on it, I thought it was too fun uh, also <laughs> to, uh, to donate that. So you played football for four years? Yes, that's right. Um, do you have any fun stories that you would like to share with us from your time on the football team or your years at Susquehanna? Well, I, I, it was um, yeah, football was fun. Uh, Rich Young, who's a legend up here, coached my high school. This was Morristown High School, Morristown, New Jersey. He's the one. I had a nice um, talk with him last night before the um, Hall of Fame banquet. And uh, gosh, she's 87 uh, now, and uh, he came to Washington High, my senior year, and coached there. He's the one that got me up up here originally, and uh, we talked about Coach uh, Stag and some of the even some of the plays and things that uh, they ran. He went on to um, coach Northumberland High School, and uh, his son-in-law, Ron, Ron Miller, is. Um, He's a legend here, playing with uh, Coach Briggs' 1991 team, which um, uh, President Lemon said he thought that was the best all-time football team in the history of uh, Susquehanna. And uh, I would disagree a little bit. I thought that the 1962 undefeated team was went right up there with one of the best uh, also in the school's history. But. Uh, and, but we had a nice, a very nice talk. Um, and I went over for the dedication of the Chrissy Alaga um, Performance Center over the um, sports, uh, the Garrett Sports Complex. And uh, uh, Whitey Keel and Coach Bob Vitello um, coached the first three years, and Jim Garrett coached my senior year. And uh, uh, just uh, Great, great memories of um, playing here on the team. I, I don't think I could make the team if I came back. I co-captained the team as a quarterback, co-captained the team my um, senior year. And uh, we still had the other record of uh, the least number of uh, points scored by our, our opponents, which I think uh, is 17, two touchdowns in eight games. And we had a great Pretty good team, played with a lot of young, fine players as well as older uh, classmates that contribute a lot to the team. And uh, I was uh, talking to one of the alums uh, yesterday and told me about Dick Purnell, another legend here in the, in the school who was a senior quarterback when I was a freshman. 
and uh, Dick had started out, I didn't know this, he started at the Naval Academy and uh, he was one of the best football players in the state at the time and he was playing with Joe Bellino and people like that were down at the Naval Academy at that time but um, he didn't, didn't like it and uh, he uh, uh, came, came out and uh, came over to, uh, to Susquehanna and said, I want to play for Susquehanna. He's from Ashland, Ashland, Pennsylvania. When we used to go to some of our away games and the bus, his father was out in the corner. We'd always uh, wave, wave to the bus as we went by. Uh, but he, uh, uh, this alumna was telling me about him who knew, I think, um, Either he was in guidance or he knew the guidance people at uh, Ashland High School, which I'm not sure if that was a high school, but that's where he went to the uh, town he grew up in. I'm not sure whether it was a regional school where he went to or not, but he, after he uh, withdrew from the Naval Academy, he said, I want to go to Susquehanna. And <clears throat> he, um, they, they talked to the guidance people and said, do you think that he can get in? He said, are you kidding me? And he came up and Coach Stagg was down on the field, and uh, he uh, with his, this is uh, senior, and uh, as well as his son, uh, Amos Alonzo Stagg Jr. And uh, the manager said, "Do you think you can get some equipment for for uh, Dick Purnell?" And they got his uh, uniform together, and uh, he started playing. Played for four years with All American here, um, senior year, but. Just great stories and that you hear, and the, the dedication of the, um, Chris Vialanga, who played in the 1991 football team that went to the semifinals of the uh, uh, Group Three uh, 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 Division Three, I should say, um, uh, of all the Division Three schools um, in, the, in the country. So it was quite a, quite an accomplishment. And, he was, uh, Chris was a vital part of that, that team. He was lost in the, uh, the uh, September 1st, 2000 uh, attack on the uh, uh, Twin Towers. He perished along with another, another uh, Susquehanna alum there. But it's a beautiful uh, conditioning room, performance room that they that made in, uh, downstairs at the um, sports complex. And, just a great, great memories I mean, going all the way back to when I first came here. Dr. Weber was president at the time, and he was a big football fan. And, um, just, just uh, you know, worked with um, Joel Cunningham, President Cunningham. Uh, did some some work on the, getting the the, the Garrett uh, complex started, and Coach Bob Patella, who's a legend, another legend here. Uh, we, John Yonicklis, who was another All-American I played with, um, <clears throat> we um, uh, had started out the uh, uh, getting the, the comp dedicating a portion of the complex, which was a locker room for Coach Bob Patello. He's, he's um, someone who always stands in the background, and we thought it was time that he had some recognition, and so um, that we started that, and then that led to the. the the uh, complex was moved up to the up to the front burner, thanks to uh, Nick Lopardo's participation uh, in it. And uh, and then when my son uh, Richard uh, came uh, here, the, I was a member of Phi Delta, president of when I was uh, my last couple of years, I was president of, of um, the chapter, local chapter. And Richard came and joined the same fraternity. And, uh, was shut down in uh, 19, uh, early 1980s because of an uh, 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 incident that happened across the street. And um, so it was closed and when he came they were meeting in a Quonset hut and asked that um, if I could get involved and perhaps get the old fraternity house reopened, which was at 308 University Avenue. And um, so we met with President Cunningham, and he outlined a plan for us to hire an architect, raise some money, uh, try and get that opened. Um, and uh, if we couldn't reopen it, um, they would dedicate some land to us on the on the, uh, on the campus. And 
so we hired an architect uh, over in Sunbury and uh, got together some uh, members, became the board members, and uh, we uh, eventually went downtown to um, the town of Sealand Grove to pre uh, prevent our to present our plan of reopening. If unfortunately, the university had used the first floor after it was closed at a, as a fraternity, but they used it as a physics laboratory. And uh, the school we thought we would be grandfathered in, and, and the town shot us down. And uh, so we we met on the, the, the staircase, President Cunningham and some of the fraternity people, myself, and decided to go to Plan B, which was to um, build a new fraternity house up on campus. And uh, so we went around to some of the surrounding uh, colleges, Lafayette and Lehigh and so forth, and took pictures trying to decide of what the new fraternity house should look like. And we were at a board meeting and uh, one, we were just discussing looking at the pictures and one of the board members said, um, why, don't we copy the old, why don't we copy the old fraternity house? It's a beautiful you know, English tutor that we had. And bingo, you know, all of a sudden the lights went on and that's what we did. The architect uh, drew the plans up and uh, we started construction in 1987 and uh, finished in 1988. And, uh, they were looking for, for um, rooms and housing, housing here at the university at that time. And uh, Dr. Cunningham came up, President Cunningham came up and Doug, uh, made the opening remarks at the dedication, which was in May of uh, 1988. Our son Richard was the chapter president. It was interesting because we were chapter presidents 27 years apart of uh, Phi Beta Delta. So but I just looked at it as, as one time, one chance in a lifetime to do something special with with Richard, and uh, it all uh, worked out um, very, very, very well for us. So that's a little bit of history, but just great stories. I mean, uh, left and right, you know, listen to. To um, the wonderful um, people that were inducted, the athletes who were inducted last night into the uh, Susquehanna Hall of Fame, and, and uh, their stories. And it's all about performance and uh, persistence and perspiration and grit. And uh, it's interesting because most of them, almost all of them, are, are um, uh, student athletes. I mean, honor students, wonderful students, as well as great athletes. And, uh, Coach Steve Briggs was, uh, he was inducted and uh, I didn't think he'd ever stop talking last night, you know, his remarks. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Coach. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was good. It was, no, he had some great stories. I mean, uh, and uh, President Lemons, I mean, he, uh, well, what, a, what a sports enthusiast. I mean, any, the, the last time I was here at, uh, at the football game, he uh, coached President Lemons was down on the, the field, and he, he's kind of a silent scout for the team. You know, he's up and down the sidelines, and uh, there were some controversial plays with referees. And uh, first, Coach Briggs went over and, and uh, you know chewed out the referees. When he finished, President Lemons went over and gave it to the referees. I thought he, they might throw him out of the game, but, but he thoroughly enjoyed it. His father, his father was uh, a high school top high school coach uh, outside of Lincoln, Nebraska when he grew up and although uh, uh, President Lemons was, was a little bit too thin in his build to play football for his father, um, he became uh, a runner and uh, he excelled in college as a, as a runner and uh, one of the inductees last night called these tall guys that could run so much grasshoppers. And uh, the, I, the President Lemon said, he, he kind of laughed when he said he was, you know, when he heard himself um, being called a grasshopper. But, uh, but great, great stories. I mean, I, I just, um, Coach Garrett um, and uh, when Jason was up here uh, at some of the celebrations, uh, so much fun. I remember sitting with Coach Garrett at one of the, one of the dedications uh, that was for himself or for Coach Patello, and some of the people came over and asked me if I was Jason Garrett. I was younger at that time, and uh, said no. I wish that I was, but uh, uh, you know, just played football for for his father. <laughs> you know? uh, but um, 
I've uh, been able to keep up, have rapport with with Coach and rapport with many people here on the uh, the staff, uh, Chris Markle and Ron Cohn. Uh, I met um, Brad, the new softball, Brad Polson, the uh, uh, softball coach. Uh, also, uh, I'd met him previously in New Jersey when he was scouting down there and met him last night. But just a wonderful family of here at Susquehanna. And I've just um, have loved you know, over the years being part of it and um, and seeing how the university has uh, advanced and, and continues to um, excel not only in academics but in athletics. And, uh, and I'm here for, for this is our 55th um, year reunion here and so I'm happy to be up here and come up with, uh, with Marilyn. Uh, Rocks, my fiance, and uh, I'm so happy, so happy that she uh, came up uh, today to see it's her first visit to to the campus. And, uh, but um, that's a little bit, a little bit of my story. One of the one of the, my my stories I always remember is about Coach Bob Patello, and all the football players have heard this story. But um, when uh, and Coach Bob, he coached with with, with Jim. Garrett, who came from Lehigh, he went over and picked up the coach, coach uh, Garrett in Lehigh when he was coming over to become the head coach. He was probably, probably about only at 29 years of age, 30 years at the most when he came over. And Coach Bob went over and picked him up at Lehigh with a truck to, to bring his belongings over. And he and Jane came over uh, to start his his tenure here, and um, uh, and Bob went on to coach with. With, um, Coach Garrett, he, he coached with Whitey Keel. He played in 1951 with Rich Young, that undefeated team uh, under the Stags. And uh, he, uh, he's, he's an accountant in, um, uh, over Mount Carmel. And uh, I, he, he just, uh, he's just a guy who I have the highest regard to, as well as all the coaches that I. Played for other coaches that I played for here, um, but uh, then he stayed on to coach you know, for uh, Rocky Reese and had Tim Hazlitt and, and uh, eventually uh, Coach Briggs. And when um, a new coach comes in, they expect the old, uh, previous coaches to ten tender their resignation, and because the new coach isn't sure he's going to keep the old coach on, and so Bob, Bob went in to meet with um, Steve when he took over, who, who's been coaching here the longest tenure uh, and has the most wins of any, any football coach uh, in Susquehanna's history. Uh, Jim Jim Garrett has the highest percentage of wins, 70%. So they're two at the top, top of the um, coaches that we've had here. And um, he, uh, Bob, when he tendered his rec resignation, um, when Steve started some 27 years ago as a head football coach, he was assistant coach here for two years before that. Um, Bob told him the story about um, when he said he would, was going to continue to coach here at SU until he found his wedding band. And so Steve asked him, well, what do you mean, Bob? And he said, well, uh, one day I was out on the field after practice and I was putting the footballs into the bag, picking them up, and spinning it over his head to kind of lock it together. And my wedding, wedding band came out on the field. He said, I haven't been able to find it since. This is years ago. So um, the next day when, when uh, Coach Patello went out in the field, there, there were three wedding bands there on the field. So I mean, it was just a great, great story, Bob, Bob Patello's story. I wish I had time to tell so many other, uh, there's just so many other stories to tell. Yeah. Well, but I, I think um, I, um, Came here to play football, but but primarily for an education. And, and um, I, mean, uh, I was a science major, and um, uh, went on to um, uh, the University of Pennsylvania School of Dental Medicine uh, after I graduated. I spent four years there, and I just felt Susquehanna prepared me well. So, uh, uh, Penn is looked upon, looked upon as the the leading uh, dental school in the country at that time. I, I think it still is today. And I feel Susquehanna gave me the education to
enabled me to go there, pick the top school and, and uh, dental school. And I found that that's another part of my career and one of the reasons I feel very strongly. I have nieces and nephews um, who go on and graduated from here. Uh, and I, they have um, like a grand niece who's my um, uh, nephew, um, Mark Derrick and his wife Barbara, they met when they were students here. And their daughter, Sarah, I believe, is a, stop, is a uh, junior here, but it's a subsequent at the present time. So there's a lot of uh, family also that follow me here. So I'm just proud to be a Susquehanna alum, proud to be here today. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much.